What's up guys, it's Hyper. Welcome back. If you're just getting started with World of Warcraft, these are the top 10 most important things you have to know. After we cover these, you're going to have a huge and massive head start. First thing you're gonna wanna buy is bags. You have to have a bunch of inventory space. There's all kinds of bags that you can buy from the auction house, but there's some really cheap ones that you can get. Definitely get those as soon as possible. Go to the innkeeper and get some potions. You can get health potions and mana potions. You don't necessarily need these for all classes, but it never hurts to have them. And some classes you definitely want them, like if you're a healer, moving around is incredibly important and you wanna be able to do that fast on your mount. Getting your mount, making it faster, and eventually being able to fly with mounts all cost gold from the trainer. A couple thousand gold is not a lot at all but when you're first starting it can definitely seem like it so make sure you're saving money up for that first normally when you pick up loot you have to select what you want to take but it'll make your life way easier if we press escape go into interface and underneath controls make sure we enable the auto loot feature speeding up things enormously now normally the camera will follow us when we're moving but we don't want that we want the camera to not adjust so under the interface under the camera option we're going to hit never adjust camera this is going to help us out so much now we have even more control over our character which is great but we can move faster also because if we press both of the mouse buttons we can instantly turn towards the direction we want to head to a and d will turn you to the right or left we definitely don't want this so go into the key bindings and for strafe left and strafe right we're going to switch those to the a and d instead now underneath targeting under target nearest enemy and previous enemy we're going to put those on our side mouse buttons now all of these are preference of course but by enabling tab targeting to our side mouse button we can attack much faster and also enable our pinky finger to have control and shift all to its own in that targeting menu if you scroll down you're going to see some name plates features you always want to see the health bars for your enemies and you don't really need to see them for your friendlies and trust me eventually you will accidentally hit the combo for these keys so let's unbind these we're going to select an enemy first and make sure that it's enabled then we're going to go back to it and unbind it we can see our friendlies health bars in our party menu that'll pop up so we don't really need to see it so make sure it's off and then go back into that menu and then unbind that key as well unbind the all nameplates keybind 2. Now we're seeing what's most important on the screen which is our enemies health bars and we have less clutter. You have different bags that you're going to be opening but we just want to see all of our stuff at once. So underneath open all bags set that to I for inventory or B for bags whatever you prefer and while you're there set up other things from possibly other games that you're used to. Maybe P for your character profile things like that. Oh and underneath the movement keys make sure you put T for auto run whether you're on a mount or on foot. There's lots of times where you're just headed in a general direction and the game is so huge you're going to want to enable this. This way you can give your hands a break sometimes and you're not constantly having to press keys to move forward. Now hot bars are really important. We can go into the quick keybind mode. Probably easier to do this but we can do this directly from the menu as well. Either way it doesn't matter but we don't want to be using six through zero and hyphen and equals. We want to be able to instantly access our spells super fast. Q and E are the most important keybinds I highly suggest using. Tilde is great as well because it's still the third key to the left of your hand just like five is for the right side of your hand one through five is great still r is super fast and quick and easy so is f and if you freed up the tab key you have that as well and then when you run out of all these keybinds you're going to want to use shift or control or alt plus these close by keys and then you can combine even more keys with your mouse keys if you have some even scrolling up or scrolling down can be used as a key again you don't have to do all this immediately just take it slow and keep these things in mind and you may even consider purchasing a mouse with a bunch of extra side mouse buttons this is a nice feature to have but you don't even have to have this if you just have a mouse with just one side mouse button just for that targeting I mean that's already great now obviously the game is huge so one of the most important things to know is where and how to get help there's a lot of great resources out there so let's cover them the first one is obviously just the in-game chat by typing in slash and then the command you can speak with different chat groups for example there's slash 2 for the trade chat slash I for the instances like if you're in a dungeon for example slash P for party slash G for guild stuff like that you'll learn these as you go but these are definitely a great way to just interact with other players and ask for help from them now you also can join a guild if you want you can even filter what kind of guild you want to join the size and what role you have and then boom hit search and you can find tons of guilds you can apply for them directly which is a great feature of wow you can do the same thing with a community and just join those directly there's tons of great resources out there but but two of my favorites are wowhead and icy veins because they both complement each other whether you're looking at rotations or news general guides 
help with quests, PvP, PvE, pretty much everything. So definitely favorite both of these websites ASAP. Then you also have the Reddits. You have the main subreddit, which is great. They're really nice there. And then they also have a WoW noob Reddit specifically designed for noobs. And then you also have the WoW PvP Reddit. Now for learning about your class, you probably want to start with the easy mode on Icy Veins. They have a really simple guide for every class in spec. And then on top of all of these, you probably want to join a Discord for your class or any other group. There's so many, and this is a great place to ask specific questions that you'll probably come up with later. Just make sure that you check out the pin messages and the general FAQ channels. Make sure you check out all of those first. And of course you have YouTube, but you already know about that, right? There's so many good resources here on YouTube that you can even just listening to something in the background, like what your class can do or dungeons that you can learn as you're doing them is such a great resource. Oh, hey, I know that guy. Definitely subscribe to your favorite channels. Wink, wink. And of course you have Google. If all of these fail, you can always just search for something. There's so many resources on this game because it's been out for so long. But chances are you'll be able to find the information you need or at least get pretty close. Speaking of planning ahead, when you hit level 60 and you're with your covenant, there's a lot of stuff you're going to be able to do. But one of the things I really wish I knew as soon as I hit 60 to do first was enabling the command table feature. Now you have to do a little questing before you can enable this. The important thing to remember here is that in your sanctum reservoir, the first thing you want to invest in is in that third option right there. This will let us activate the command table and we can start sending off what's called companions to do missions for us. Now these are like AFK missions that you can set up, but some of these missions involve getting money. But here's the key. If you do this first, as soon as you hit 60, you're going to be able to constantly be getting a passive income. This will help you get so much gold over time, especially if you're planning to make more alts in the future. You can set this up for each of your alts and then send all of this money to your main character. Not only can you do all this with all your alts, but you can get the companion app too. And then you can do all of this from your phone. You don't even have to be playing the game to be making money. This is a huge bonus and you can make bank doing this. Here are the locations just in case you need them, but they're in your main area of wherever your coven is. World of Warcraft is ginormous. You can get lost very easily. You want to make sure that you have kind of a home base where you can always come back to to start from. You'll get an item very quickly in the game called the Hearthstone. With this, you can teleport to inns. So one of the first things you want to do is if you're Lions, come to Stormwind. And if you're on Horde side, go to Orgrimmar, find an innkeeper and hit make this in your home. Whenever you get lost or you just need to come back home to use one of the resources like the bank or something like that, or get help from trade chat, whatever, you can activate this hearthstone and use it whenever you want. The reason you want to be able to do this is because at these locations are so many different things that you can use that can help you out. If you ever don't remember where some of these places are, you can always speak to any guard. Here are some of the more popular ones. So you have the bank here where you can put your stuff. But yeah, you can find your mailbox. You can find a vendor where you can sell stuff and repair. You have the auction house where you can purchase other items, a barber shop if you want to change the look of your character, a transmogrifier for fashion. And then there's portal and rides and all kinds of stuff that you can learn more about later to take you to other locations. So if you picked Horde, this is Orgrimmar, this is the innkeeper you can speak with to make this place your home. All you got to do is speak to a guard, hit one of the options that you're looking for, and you'll see that little red flag on the mini map and you can head there. Next up is add-ons. And no, I'm not going to tell you to go and download and install a bunch of them. I just want to talk about them real quick because when I did first start it, a lot of people suggested a ton of different add-ons. Even though it's actually pretty easy to install and start using them, it can be overwhelming at first with how many different ones there are. What add-ons do is basically make the game easier in some aspect, whether it's installing some sort of pretty little cursor trail or an add-on like details that shows you all aspects of combat or bigger notifications for the center of your screen or cooldowns that enemies can have in PvP. Even my user interface here is called LVUI. This itself is an add-on. Pretty much if you can imagine it, there's an add-on for it. So I only bring up all these add-ons to tell you what not to do. 
don't go and look up the top five PVP add-ons or the top 10 best dungeon add-ons and then go and install a bunch of them. It's going to be too overwhelming at first. If you want to install an add-on, that's fine, but just take it one step at a time. I have guides on how to do that below, but again, just take things slow. Kind of piggybacking off of that is the user interface. There's as many different user interfaces as there are players, pretty much. You're going to see a ton of different user interfaces. Now, what you don't want to do is end up with a user interface like this with just a billion different things on the screen. If you do start adjusting your UI, go for as minimal as possible. Lots of add-ons that you'll be able to mess with in the future can actually pop things up on your screen as they become necessary. But again, less is more. So try to just be minimal in your approach. For a lot of people, these user interfaces will constantly be evolving as you change things in the game. But at the same time, there's a ton of players out there, including pros that don't even mess with the user interface. Playing with the regular stock user interface that WoW gives you is perfectly viable. Another awesome thing about WoW is that you can queue up for things and just go into those instances. Around level 10, you're going to be able to start doing dungeons. You can hit the dungeon finder and queue up for dungeons, and this will put you in an instance with other players. Now, dungeons are awesome. Not only can you get a ton of loot and experience and level up, but it's just a great way to practice playing your character, learning your class, interacting with other players, and just generally learning learning the mechanics of the game. They're also just a ton of fun. For these dungeons, there's gonna be different bosses throughout it and mobs to kill. There are three roles. There's a healer, a tank, and DPS. The tank will tanks all the damage and it's their job to taunt the mobs or boss towards them so that the rest of the party doesn't take too much damage. And then it's the healer's job, of course, to heal the rest of the party and then the DPS to just do lots of damage. It's really not too hard to do these. Primarily what you're gonna be doing though is just following the tank, avoiding poison or fire on the ground, not pulling extra mobs. Stay really close to your party. If you do, just say my bad because it's probably gonna happen. And again, you can always just tell people at the beginning of a dungeon, hey guys, I'm a newer player, until you're more comfortable with running dungeons and knowing what to do. There is a dungeon journal. You can get all the specifics for every dungeon that you're going to be playing right here. You can see exactly what your spec should be doing for each of these places and bosses. I do suggest doing that, but if you're not going to read that, then definitely at least pull up a video on YouTube with that specific dungeon and just listen to it in the background as you're doing that dungeon. Even if it's just picking up one or two things, it's going to help out a lot. Also, just be aware, like if someone in your party says does everyone in the party knows the mechanics for this boss speak up and say no i don't chances are if someone brings that up there's some mechanics for that specific boss that you definitely want to be aware of so just speak up if they brought that up it's because they want to help now when i say mechanics i just mean things like maybe a boss has certain totems that you have to kill first or maybe that boss consists of two or three little bosses and you have to do them in a specific order things that are really simple but also things that you want to make sure you do as well now be aware that there is a vote to kick function it's possible that you may be kicked from a party don't take it personally if someone kicks you from a party without giving you a warning or explaining why well then they're just assholes but once in a very rare while it can happen so don't let that get to you if it does and also remember that if someone else in your party is being an asshole you can vote to kick them as well if you really want to take your game to the next level here's how to do that make learning your primary rotation an important goal use one of the resources i gave you to find out a type of rotation that you want to do because you can start doing that even at a lower level. So just go to the dummies and even if it's two skills like I'm using right here, you can practice using those skills and remembering which one will primarily go before the other. Here's an example. So for my prop warrior right here, let's say I want to learn this AOE rotation. I'm going to screenshot it and look at these top seven skills for it. Now we don't have all of them obviously because we got to level up, but if you can see here, we do have revenge and shield slam available. These two skills are a part of that rotation and then go to the training dummies and try to practice the available skills skills out of that rotation that we can. As you level up, you're going to get more skills and then you can add those into that rotation. So I have Shield Slam and Revenge, but I don't have Devastate, but we do get that at level 12. Once we hit level 12, we come back to the dummies and then we practice our new rotation with those three skills and then try to practice the rotation to the best of our ability. The better you get at rotations, I mean, you're just going to be killing it. Now, macros can definitely be a lot to handle at first, but they're definitely something you want to learn eventually. Things are always scariest if we don't know anything.
anything about them. And I really want you guys to take your game to the next level. So we're just gonna cover four super, super simple macros that anybody can use. So first of all, what is a macro? A macro is just a command that you input into WoW. It's slightly programmable to the extent that WoW lets us, but the best way to understand macros are just to see what they do. So we're gonna press escape, go into macros, press new, select an icon, and then type in a title. For this one, let's set up your favorite emote. So that can be slash dance, slash roar, slash cheer, whatever you want. Just type that emote in directly as you normally would in chat, and bam, that's literally it. Now we're done with the macro. Just hit save, drag it to our hotbar, and we can set up a keybind if we want, or just click it. Either way, now we have one button to cast that emote. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're gonna do a line of text. You can make this for anything. So here's an example. I have a high message for whenever I enter dungeons, and then a thank you all macro for when we're done. And then here's another one. So as I mentioned earlier, it's always great for at least until you're comfortable with dungeons to just let people know that you're new with them, but you don't want to type that out every single time you go in a dungeon. So instead, let's just make one macro that says what we want to say. We'll save it, and now every time we enter a dungeon, we can let everyone know we're new so that the dungeon run hopefully goes a bit more smooth with just one click. Now for some spell macros. So the first one, we're going to use the slash stop casting command. Don't worry about the show tooltip. That's just standard for any of the spell macros. That just gives us the little box in the corner so that it looks more natural like other spells. But yeah, just always put that for spell macros. Anyways, we're going to put the slash stop casting command right here and then slash cast and then the name of whatever spell you want to immediately cast. Now here's the thing. Every single class or spec, no matter what you play, has some sort of, if not a couple, spells or skills that you want to immediately cast. What I mean by this is there's skills that you're going to use that take a second or two to cast. Now in a lot of situations, you don't want to wait for those spells to finish before you can cast that emergency one. Whether it's some sort of kick, cancel, counter type spell that you need to immediately cast, like if let's say a mob is casting inner fire, they can start healing, or maybe a healing spell that you need to use immediately because you're really close to dying. We don't want to wait for any of these types of spells. We just want to cast them immediately. And that's what the slash stop casting command does. So here's an example. So I'm on my warlock alt. I've never played this class before, but I really like the strain life skill. It gives us a lot of life very quickly. So I want to make sure that I can use this immediately. So we're going to type in the basic stop casting macro and then type in slash cast drain life. We're going to save it and then we're going to replace the regular drain life skill that we had previously with this macro and then let's test it out. So here I am, I'm facing this mob. I'm going to cast chaos bolt before it ends. We're going to interrupt it with drain life. That's because the macro has the stop casting command. So we stop immediately whatever we were casting before. Here it is again, a little slower. So we're casting chaos bolt. It's not finished and we cast drain life immediately. Normally we would spam drain life until chaos bolt is done. So by replacing it with this macro, we get a huge advantage. Chances are you probably have at least a couple spells that have this sort of aim with your mouse method. This way we can see exactly where it's going to cast, but we really don't need it because we know where it's going to cast wherever our cursor is. And these spells can take a while because you have to press the keybind for it. Then you have to make sure you're aimed in the right spot. Then you have to left click the spell so that it actually casts. And that's three clicks right there. So let's make a macro to shorten this. We're going to go to the macros, hit new, select an icon, give it a name. We're going to put the standard show tooltip for spells. And then we're going to type in this command with this at cursor function. Then the name of the spell. We're going to hit save it. Now check this out. All we have to do now is aim with the cursor wherever we know we want to cast it. Press the keybind once and bam, it immediately casts right there. This is way easier and way faster to do. Anyways, there's a ton of different macros out there. And if you're new, don't even worry about them. You'll eventually come across them in guides and stuff. Now, whenever you do come across future macros, you can feel confident that you know how to make them. But even then, just do one or two that are most important for your class. And of course, take things slow. Just with these four macros that you just learned, you just took your game to a whole new level. And that brings us to the most important tip. Make sure you're having fun. From dungeons to killing bosses, to leveling up, to making friends, to keyboards to wear out, to future expansions to look forward to, to tier sets to collect, to PvP arenas to get competitive with, drinking lots of coffee, doing awesome fun battlegrounds, staring at cute ducks, or unlocking entirely brand new races to play, drinking more coffee, <laughs> finding a guild to play with, previous expansions. You can literally be a wolf with a freaking sword. There's just so much fun stuff to do in WoW. So if that means you have to turn off trade chat because it's being particularly obnoxious for that day or forever, or slash ignoring somebody so that you don't have to interact with them again, then that's totally fine. As well as just enjoy the scenery along the way. You don't really need to rush to the end game as fast as possible. There's almost 4,000 achievements in World of Warcraft, a dozen different content, 
continents, entire worlds, over 24,000 different quests. Remember to have fun because it's a game and forget the meta, by the way. Just forget the meta. It's going to change every month anyways. We got stuff to do like epic raids. I mean, look at this. We're a wolf howling at the moon on top of a shape-shifting Draenei. Life skills like fishing, gathering, mining, pet battles, collecting and finding transmogs, hunting for different mounts. I mean, look at that shit. Finding rare toys, going undercover as an ogre, creating alts, checking out blood elves. I mean, <clears throat> finding treasure or a billion other things. The possibilities are endless. Just remember to have fun and go level up. Guys, thank you so much for checking my videos today. I'm so excited you're getting in a wow. Let me know what class you plan on playing. And if you have any extra questions, let me know down below. Guys, y'all have a fantastic rest of your week. And don't forget to grind harder, baby. Let's go.